All right, everyone. It's February 11th, and as you can see, uh, that sleeve removal tool that I purchased did a good job. Got all four out. Uh, no problems whatsoever. Real happy uh, about the uh, the product. Um, I've had a few people mention, you know, they'd like to let let me explain a little better about what I'm doing um, as I'm going along in this project. Um, I never really considered myself much of a teacher, but I'll give it a whirl anyway. Uh, I don't know everything, so please don't uh, give me a failing grade. <laughs> but um, uh, what a sleeve is, or what they do, what is the purpose of them? Um, first of all, not every engine out there has a sleeve. Um, not every tractor has a sleeve. Now most tractors and like industrial equipment that's when you will see uh, sleeves uh, more likely. Um, what, they, what they do is it's basically just a, a protection. Um, you can run uh, the pistons right in the block. Okay, This is a cast iron block. Um, they're, they're hard enough. Uh, they machine them. They would hone them. And yeah you could put uh, the pistons and the rings and everything would just run right in there. Um, uh, a, a lot of uh, you know, your lawn mowers and stuff like that will have that. Cars will even have that. Um, now, not all tractors have sleeves. Um, this little pony, that's a Continental engine, um, along with my Silver King, is also a uh, Continental engine. Uh, they did not use sleeves in them. They run them right in the block. Um, I believe the Farmall Cub uh, is the same way. But um, basically what they do is it's just an extra layer of protection. Um, in my previous videos when I was tearing this apart, number one cylinder uh, was actually rubbing um, the inside of the sleeve a good bit. It was scuffing the piston, scuffing the sleeve. Now one good thing is you wouldn't want to use that sleeve over again. So what you can do is just remove it and put new ones in. Now, if that would happen and you didn't have a sleeve, you would actually have to spend a lot of money, have that board out, and get bigger pistons uh, to, to match the, uh, the bigger hole now. So that is one good thing about um, uh, sleeves. There are different kind of sleeves. This particular uh, engine uses what they call a dry sleeve. Um, what that means, there's a dry sleeve and a wet sleeve. Now, the difference of a wet sleeve, there's a pretty big difference. There would be no um, uh, uh, cylinder wall. When you look down into a dry uh, or a wet sleeve engine, I'm sorry, a wet sleeve engine, you look down there, there'll be a big opening the whole way across there. And the sleeve for them, I apologize I don't have one. I thought I had one, but I must have tossed it. Um, about a couple inches up, the, the diameter or the outside the, am the diameter will be smaller. And then they would have an O-ring that goes, the O-ring actually would fit down in the uh, bottom part of the block and you would push that down in. Um, and that would seal and the antifreeze would actually be right up against the sleeve itself. Um, there are advantages of that. Uh, a lot of people say it cool better when you have the antifreeze right up against it um, as to where the antifreeze would on you know, this particular engine would be uh, would have to, you know, the coolant or the cooler antifreeze would have to go through the the block and then uh, to the sleeve. It would run a little hotter, I guess. But um, one disadvantage of a wet sleeve is that O-ring does go bad uh, occasionally, and it would drip down into the bottom of where the oil pan would be, and it would contaminate all your oil. Um, is there anything bad about the dry sleeve engines? No, not really. Uh, obviously these four tractors have been around for years, still going strong. Uh, I read somewhere where they are the most used antique tractor uh, in the country, which I believe since, well, there was more of them the N series made than any other tractor, so I guess that would make sense. Um, but that is what uh, the sleeves are all about. It's just an extra protection uh, for wear and tear. Uh, I know you don't rebuild these engines every other year or anything, but uh, you know, if you could 
pop these sleeves out all the time and uh, just continue to uh, to use the block uh, over and over again. So that's that uh, little update. Uh, here is the uh, the head. This is a flathead engine. So uh, there is one little problem with this. Now when I go to the machine shop, I'm going to have to have this taken care of. But when I put that on top, I don't know if you can hear this or not. I'm just rocking it. It should not rock and make any kind of a noise. Um, it should be completely flat. Um, the head itself seems to have a warp right around in this area. It's a little bit higher. Um, the block itself has right in here as well. It seems to be a little higher. So what they're going to have to do is they'll machine that. It's called decking. And they will have to uh, just knock that down a little bit, shave it down, and then shave this down so it'll be uh, completely flat. Also, this is the flywheel. I'll have to have this machined as well. They'll make that completely true again. It was slipping a good bit, and when you slip, they get hot, they get warped. So I'll have to get that done. Um, and also, these teeth, that's where your starter uh, engages, turning the engine to start it. Now, most engines, when you turn them off, believe it or not, they will always stop in the same location. Um, and there's evidence of that from right about here to here. These teeth are just chewed up about halfway, uh, halfway gone. Uh, there's a reason for that. Every time that starter, the Bendix kicks out, bam, 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 year after year, year after year, start after start, it keeps hitting the same place. So, what you can do is you can actually take these ring gears off. Now, a little bit of a process, but what you do is you heat this up with a torch for the whole way around, and believe it or not, it will slide right off. It's a, it's a real tight, pressed fit. Um, you can get a new one, put it right back on, you're in good shape. Um, they also have known to uh, actually slip on here, but... Uh, um, normally that's not the case, but I'll have to take that off and get that machine down. And uh, here's something interesting. This is a head that the uh, guy down the road gave to me. Um, it is off of an Aiden. Now, if you're a Ford enthusiast, you're going to notice something really different right here. That is actually a sending unit for a temperature gauge. Uh, most of these four tractors did not have a temperature gauge. Um, this is actually a pretty rare head. I've heard of people uh, doing it themselves, drilling a hole and tapping it and putting one in there. Uh, there's some risk involved in that. It does work, but this is actually factory. You can tell by the, uh, the casting mold there. But um, I might even get this shave just so I uh, have it on hand if anybody whatever wanted or I'd need it but um, that's pretty interesting and it was a good price free so can't complain about that so the next step is taking everything to the machine shop and then doing the weight um, who knows how long that will take but um, everything else is pretty well cleaned up ready to go and um, I hope I shed some light on what sleeves are all about and um, we'll uh, Wait around for the next video here. Bye.